Dear students, in this module, I'm going to continue on elaborating the Chow Fassman algorithm. This is the second module in the series of four. You know that alpha helix can be extracted for the secondary structure formation if the propensity of four contiguous amino acids is greater than one for alpha helix. This process is repeated to extend the alpha helix on both sides and on either side of this first alpha helix turn, we continue to calculate the propensity for uh, alpha helices. As long as these propensities are more than one, we continue to expand our alpha helix. However, besides the alpha helices, there are beta sheets and turns and loops and coils as well. So how do we go about transitioning from alpha helices to beta sheets? Because in a bigger protein, alpha helices can be then connected to beta sheets or loops. So let's do that in this module. So the first step, as I just mentioned, is that you finalize which alpha helices are there in the sequence and then for the remaining portions of the sequence, you can evaluate them towards formation of beta sheets. So let's see how to start with beta sheet formation in Chow Fassman algorithm. Before you begin with the starting of beta sheets, you need to first finalize your alpha helices. To finalize your alpha helices, you need to make sure that the alpha helices have a higher propensity than the beta sheets. So to calculate the propensities of beta sheets, you have to follow the same procedure as you did for propensities of alpha helices. If you look at this table in the second column, you have the propensities for each amino acid to form a beta sheet and all of them are given here. So what you can do is you can select an amino acid and then compute the overall propensity for several amino acids. Towards that, you can compute the propensity for five amino acids. These five amino acids should be contiguous, that is, they should be together in the amino acid sequence. Next, from these regions, you need to identify the regions where five contiguous residues have the propensity for alpha helices to be greater than propensity for beta sheets. So, what you are trying to clarify here is that for five amino acids in the protein sequence, they should have the propensity for formation of alpha helix to be greater than the beta sheet. If such five amino acids are there, then you can label them and finalize them as alpha helices. However, if that is not the case, then you need to evaluate those five contiguous amino acids for being part of a beta sheet. So you can repeat this step for the full amino acid sequence to finalize all the alpha helices within the sequence. So this will help you to identify and isolate the alpha helices and the corresponding amino acids from the protein sequence. Now the remaining amino acids can be evaluated for formation of other secondary structures. In conclusion, you must remember that why are we selecting five amino acids in this case? The reason is that for formation of a beta sheet, you require at least five amino acids to start a beta sheet. Therefore, alpha helices can be finalized if their propensity is higher than the propensity of formation of a beta sheet and that can be for the five neighboring amino acids. For those regions where that is not the case, further evaluation is required whether they form a beta sheet, a turn, a loop, etc.